As an online film critic, it is in the totally existent handbook that this is a week in which I must review something with the word Avengers in it, because that's a lot easier to find than something with the word Ultron. What? No, I said Ultron, not Poltron. The fuck is a Poltron? A robot chicken? So I've decided to settle with the crippled Avengers. And look! The title card suggests you'll get to see all your favorite Marvel characters, but in crippled form. Move over, Netflix's Daredevil. Now let's see some of these superheroes in action. Psych, it's a kung fu movie. This doesn't have shit to do with Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> Let the summer movie season begin. The Crippled Avengers is also known as The Return of the Five Deadly Venoms, reuniting the cast of some other Five Deadly Venoms film. Or at least four of them, but Return of the Five Deadly Venoms minus one wasn't as good of a title. But the more eye-catching title is Mortal Kombat. You know it's a knockoff because it isn't spelled right. Combat is spelled with a K, thank you very much. But thankfully this is one Mortal Kombat that is in no danger of Paul W.S. Anderson turning it into a PG-13. Speaking of misspellings, there is no S in WB, and I wish this movie took into consideration that I don't speak French, but at least it is in widescreen. Hey, it's that thing that ever since 2003, people look at it and say, Hey, that's from Kill Bill! As you can see, Crippled Avengers clearly has another alternate title of Thriller, a Kung Fu Picture. Though it doesn't take much for a fight to get started. Who are you men? Tin and Tigers. We want to see two Tin Toes. <laughs> Jesus, don't you at least want to shake hands first? From what I know about this movie, hands aren't going to be around for much longer. I am not buying this totally unrealistic looking set. Now we know what happens when you throw weapons onto the Mikado stage. Shit gets serious. Things are quite dangerous as the hostage is calmly skipping along the way. Right. Let's cut his wife's legs off. And his son's arms off. Right. Whoa, whoa. Too far! We're just here to repossess his car. Oh, well, thank God his arms were already fake. Ugh, I still don't understand these subtitles. But I do understand the pain of a father coming home and finding his family armless and legless. Bastard! You're gonna pay for this! I feel this situation calls for a name a lot more extreme than Bastard. This is clearly a motherfucker situation. This is Chu Twin, a master of tiger kung fu, which means he's really good at watching the movie Exit the Dragon, Enter the Tiger. This hits poor Chu extra hard, since he was a leg man. Damn, this looks painful. Dad, though they cut off my arms, still, they couldn't make me beg. Good. On the other hand, you seem to be taking amputation pain very well. And your dad seems rather supportive. When your arm's healed up, I'll get a blacksmith to make you iron hands. Damn, a promise like that will take a whole movie to fulfill. All right, like I promised you, I got you iron hands. Well, that was fast. Too bad they ruin it by putting the RZA in the lead and placing in an annoying soundtrack. Just kidding. Seriously, nice hand job. So far, I've tried seven pairs, but these are the best. I believe him, too. His previous set belonged to Edward Penis Hands. Wait, what the fuck? Make up your mind. Either the opening credits are done or they aren't. I'm trying to watch a movie here. <laughs> anyway, the years of metal hand training appear to have paid off. Demonstrate the three styles for me. Hmm. Huh. Forest Tiger. <laughs> On second thought, we don't need names for any of these moves. Just keep hitting your enemies with your metal hands, like this. You must try to cripple them. Right. Oh, they sure are crippled now. Until their wounds heal, and then they return, pissed off, and with guns. Poor Chu Cho Chang may have no arms, but he still has continued parental support. Even crippled. He's a great deal better than most men. 
a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> I love my crippled son who is only a fraction of a full person. Dear Cinema Snob, I'm ready to express my outrage at you, jokingly referring to the armless character as Chucho Chang. I realize you grew up in a decade dominated by names like Long Duck Dong and Short Round, but here in 2015, we don't really take kindly to mocking Oriental names with words that sound like you're trying to say Choo Choo Train in order to poke fun at the Asian handicap. What? What? That's the character's actual name, you putz! Okay, good job at not staring at his hands. <laughs> What are you two doing? This truly does deserve a slap in the face, and nothing more extreme than that. I... Oh, my mistake. I didn't realize that the Three Stooges... I said I didn't realize that the Three Stooges... Alright, enough! Something something Three Stooges reference because he got his eyes poked out. Anyone else giving them trouble? He's just a blacksmith. We'll find him anytime. To the Sears Auto Body Shop! Or let's just poison him. And what's in it? A drug. To make you mute. And stop you cursing. Or you could just take him to church. But that's not all. And now on your death too! One power the metal hands don't have. The power to make someone hear the ocean until they go deaf. I'm starting to wonder who the real villains are here. It sets up that these are supposed to be our sympathetic heroes, but all they're doing is going around crippling people who look at them funny. That's like if an hour into Death Wish, Charles Bronson just started raping people. He should be using his iron fists for good, like pulling off these fake sideburns. Also, you're wearing your headband wrong. Good thing that stick works. He knew the stairs were there so he could perform a pratfall on them. I think I sense a new friendship. I'm blind. You. Are you? You're dumb. And deaf, too. Oh. You're Mr. Way. This is for everyone who didn't know that See No Evil, Hear No Evil is a remake of a kung fu movie. But their new club doesn't have all of its members yet. Good God, never mind being called the Crippled Avengers. This should be called the Sad Avengers. I don't know what the hell could depress me more than this. Come on, kitty. Come here. Come here now. Jump up, kitty. Come here. Come here, kitty. Come here. Come here, kitty. Come here. Kitty, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty. Come here, kitty. Christ! Can we cut to something happy, please? <laughs> My bro fell off his board and got run over by a steamroller. <laughs> oh, this dooski's for you, bro. Well, that settles it. Unless someone badass shows up, this day is really a downer. Don't worry. I shall avenge you. Oh, things are looking up. Do they finally have the hero that they deserve? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, fuck, I guess not, but he at least told them where Charlie M is. Maybe he'll be okay. <laughs> well, great. Our lead Avenger is now such an idiot that he has the sudden urge to binge watch Celebrity Apprentice. At least he plays the part dignified. I always wondered what multiplicity would look like if it were a kung fu movie. I see this is the part where he gets a letter saying his name is Jim and that they found his birth father. The Dragon Sound origin story is a little far-fetched. And I suppose this is the rest of the movie. Never mind the revenge. Let's watch a dumb guy fix things. Just kidding. They're off to see the Wizard of Oz. He doesn't cure them. He just breaks their spines with a magic broom. Serves them right. Look at how they spend their free time. <laughs> Throwing rocks at kids, I understand the appeal. He may be dumb, but at least he still has his stealth moves. Hey, come on! Well, it is much quicker than the blacksmith taking two hours to make a key. 
Are they ever gonna change this man's bandages? His four eyes are bleeding. They happen upon an old master who agrees to help them out on their revenge quest. I am going to teach you. Somehow I'm going to make you experts. And if that doesn't work, you'll all make fantastic doormats. But first things first, they have to design a boot to chug beer out of when they're done with their training. Oh, Droppo, you're the dumbest man on China Mars. They need to get trained fast so that Steve Gutenberg and Bruce Jenner can sign them to a record label. And as for the dumb guy... Huh? Uh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, now he can do that thing that he's always been able to do. Only this time they can open in Vegas for David Copperfield. Just don't do any jokes. <laughs> I have no son. Now if Chu Twin hires them as his gardener, they're set. But they'll never be able to top Chang's weed whacker. And here's what to do in case your enemies look back at Sodom and Gomorrah. No, you fool! This was my son's art project! It took weeks to build and now he's gonna get an F! This movie's training sequence is so long that it's starting to feel like a Michael Cimino wedding scene. <laughs> you know, if John Savage got his ass stuck in the wedding ring. All things considered, I guess their training is going well. Well now, you've been here for three years. It took you that long to play with rings? And why does the master sound so hopeless? But then when it comes to his mind, he is hopelessly crippled. But he did found a fantastic shrimp company. Bright side is, for a guy who had his eyes poked out, his eyes look fine. Now that their three-year training is up, it's time for that revenge. But we all have to arrive before Two's birthday. Yes, it has to be before the birthday. They're the mariachi band. Frankly, I think they've traveled all this way to tell this man that his Whoopi Goldberg 80s hairstyle is highly questionable. Or they just wanted to partake in some blind guy table pranks. A drink? Man, high school is rough. Mr. Warren, have you forgotten that three years ago you said to me... Oh, fuck. Uh, it's been three years. Uh, I forgot. What are we fighting about again? No, no. Stand back. If we all rush him, that'll make more sense and we might win. Best settle this with conversation. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Somehow the dubbing managed to be weird in a scene that didn't have any lines. Oftentimes when we see the deaf man's point of view, the audio goes silent. Why does this movie mute itself and not to catch a yeti or return to sleepaway camp? Two movies featuring characters designed to make you hit the mute button. Thankfully they've made it before the birthday party. I came here especially for your birthday. Which is why I'm wearing my stripper clothes. Any other tricks? This is Mr. Lynn. Famous for his ball shot technique. He say ball shot techniques? So he got his training from Cruisin' 57? I'm not sure this is what you want to put at the entrance to your wax museum. It might scare the customers away. While they are certainly no match for a table, I can't help but wonder how that birthday party is going. <laughs> house on the left. Stop ruining shit! And if you're wondering more about this guy's techniques... <laughs> Excellent. Now let's try one that's not made out of plastic. Now the revenge is underway. I hope nothing happens. Tomorrow's the birthday. I feel like the movie is insisting that we, the audience, don't forget his birthday. What do I care? I didn't even get an invitation! I wonder if they too get their revenge by making the others crippled, like the Metal Hands did earlier. <laughs> now you're life disabled. A smart trick. Wonder who taught him. Who what, to chop a stomach in half? I think it was Dr. Giggles. Things are getting serious. I just wanted to make sure that nothing could spoil the birthday. Okay, you need to accept the fact that this birthday party is a bust. But the presents turned out nice. They all got shields and swords. Which they are all using to signal that dinner is ready. 
Good job putting out that candle. Now try shooting at the guy that you're trying to kill. I have the feeling they'll be safe. He's checking his lifeline. He'll be fine. Not even putting a little stank on it can bring this guy down. And why is this feeling a lot more like a sitcom? Which one of you is first? Hold it! I suppose no one ever tried blades on this guy before, because he's immediately taken down by a full kick of pointed metal to the chest. And now he's off to go train Handyman. Boy, is the boss gonna be upset about this. You worked for me for a great number of years, but you never screwed up like this. It was because of your coming birthday. Whoa, whoa, I realized that you lost a lot of men, but we worked hard on getting this birthday party ready. It's easy for them to find the dumb guy. He's the one randomly standing upside down on the restaurant tables. And he fights with a deadly ass bump. Personally, I'm questioning all of their mental stability. I hear that you have a big reputation. But I've never seen you fight. So I don't know. In fact, who are you? Why am I here? At least they're smart enough to actually run away this time. Fuck this getting killed shit. Let's catch him off guard. We'll attack tomorrow. Exactly. You must die after the party. It's gonna be a real shindig. Wait, is this the birthday party or is it a wedding ceremony? This is gonna be the worst birthday party since happy birthday to me. A couple of them are instantly distracted by the power of the sun, annoying noises, and what are they gonna do to this guy? Show him some geometry to confuse him? I'm confused about how they're expecting me to believe that these people are really getting stabbed. And why is he spanking someone's ass in the background? Now the characters are just fucking with me. Why is this fight lasting so long? I saw him shoot with those hands earlier. What is he waiting for? <laughs> now they're just showing off. I don't even think they're fighting anymore. Uh-oh, here it comes. <laughs> well, it took you long enough to use those, and it did absolutely nothing. Chang dies by, I'm not sure, ring poisoning? At least dumb guy was nice enough to die only when it was convenient. The final fight with Chu is prolonged by the power of slow motion. Your feet! It's ended by the power of steel foot to the chest. Ooh, now all we're left with is one final line that truly shows how far the characters have come in their badassery. We get him? Sure. The hell kind of final line was that? They don't seem too sure that the villain is dead, but they seem damn sure that the movie's over. Crippled Avengers was the eighth film in a series featuring the group, which was known as the Venom Mob. They were kind of like the real mob, only they put snake heads in your bed. The actors were highly trained in martial arts, weaponry, and often did all the choreography for their films, of which over two dozen were made. Sure, you could watch those, or you could make this a double feature with Crippled Masters. Best stick with the Crippled Fighters subgenre, which apparently is a thing. Personally, I will stick with my left foot, thank you very much. A movie in which the piercing of the heart does not involve blood, but tears.